In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to clone a mask. I have a clip of a person jumping and dancing in a field. I want to mask our subject and clone it so we have duplicates dancing throughout the frame. So let's get started. I'm going to find my clip, drag it into the timeline. Then I'm going to create a mask and enter our mask editor. I want to pick a frame where she's in the air and not obstructed by any grass near her feet. So this is good. Then I'll click on my subject. I'm going to click on it again to refine it. In this case, selecting the toes. That looks very good. With only two clicks, I'm already feeling confident that it's working well. So let's preview this and see. So I'm happy with it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to drag the original clip in again. Uh, you can also duplicate the clips before you create a mask so you aren't having to drag the clip back into the timeline after the fact, but I forgot to do so this time. I can copy and paste the layer with Control C and Control V, or if you're on a Mac, Command C, Command V, or simply just right click the layer and hit duplicate. Once I've duplicated my layer, I'll take the duplicates and resize it. Positioning them on another portion of the frame like it's on another part of the field Then I will repeat this process a few times until the field is more populated So I'll duplicate Adjust the scale adjust the position. I Like that there uh, because it's a long clip. We have the luxury of Selecting different portions of the length of the clip and adjusting the in and out and nudging them in the timelines and now we have clones of the subject dispersed throughout the field. And I'm okay with having the subject pop in and out of frame, um, having them appear on and disappear. And just for fun, I'm going to add a title. I have a pre-made PNG that I made in Photoshop, and I'm just going to drag that underneath my masked layers. And I'm happy with that. I want to show you one more example. I have a clip of a skateboarder going across the screen doing a grind. I'm going to select a portion of the frame that might contain the most visual information about our subject. So while telling the system to include things might seem super easy, uh, telling the system what not to include or exclude can sometimes be just as important. So during the section where there's a lot of action happening, I can see the system is picking up on some of the building behind the subject. So I want to toggle the option to exclude and click on a spot to remove. I'm clicking again on the remaining portions I want to remove. I see there's a part of the pant leg it's not including, so I'll switch to I'll switch back to include and select that. And it's doing a very nice job of refining this. So I'm going to preview it. I notice there's a moment at the end where it loses the board a little. I'm going to create a new keyframe. Just select the board. And there we are. So I'm happy with it. I'm going to save it. Bring in the original clip as a background layer, then duplicate my mask and create several clones. And what I want to do here is offset the layers in the timeline uh, to sort of create a trail of clones. And there we go. Just last thing for extra credit, I'm going to insert a title to make it more complete with my pre-made transparent PNG here. Drag the PNG underneath the masked layers. Extend the handles. I see the white text is proving a little hard to read with the sky. And one thing I can do to resolve this is add a brightness and contrast effect to make it pop. And with Runway's effects library, I can select the brightness and contrast effect. And 
and adjust the values so the whites can be dialed back and maybe the contrast can be increased a little to help make the white title a little bit more visible. And that's just a little preview of how you can work with clones uh, with Runway ML. Thank you for watching and check back for more upcoming tutorials. <laughs>